Hi, I'm Dan, and this is a little bit of a story called Halyards of Black and Silver. Late morning blows a steady eight knots west-southwest, carrying six brown pelicans out toward Trinity Bay. Shoals of croaker swim below, unaware of imminent death. Roman augurs on the Aventine Hill would have called those gangly birds a doubtful auspice. Today, a hungover fishing guide out of Smith Point blesses them. Desperate for a change in luck, he hopes they'll dive and work the big trout into hook-blind frenzy. Meanwhile, the skipper of a Vietnamese crab trawler damns them for scavengers, his hue inflection soggy with coastal Texas drawl. Callie watches from the marina with the masts of small pleasure boats cluster like anodized aluminum weeds. Her eyes are not on the birds, but on the moving tide. It's perfect sailing weather, but she has work waiting. She'll make time later for sunning and picking her old guitar, but relaxation has become a luxury. Winning it back requires readiness for storms more ancient and vast than humans can remember. It's a common lot shared by Callie and her sister sirens along the world's far-flung shores, and not one they can discuss with the humans they resemble only in the most superficial aspects. Callie herself isn't prepared to sail against such fury, but she will be soon. Tall, taut-skinned, and hazelnut brown, Callie stands out among her neighbors. Gulf climate weathers a body, and most of the marina's live-aboard tenants are pushing middle age at least. Nobody giving Callie the once-over would put her a day over 33. Her hair never lightens in the sun. It only reddens a bit, spoiling the illusion of true black. She's not a being made up of absolutes, although there are certain constants. When her shorts hike up on her thighs, no tan line shows. High time to scrape that bottom, calls an old marina lifer. Callie doesn't look up as the man ambles alongside. He has the same number of teeth as fingernails, not many after decades of half-drunk boat building. His keen sailor's eyes appraise her craft's accumulation of barnacles and scum at the waterline. Ain't dove in years myself. Reckon my brother-in-law could haul it for you. Callie smiles, politely indulgent. It's no come on. Anyone can see her boat needs a bottom job. He watches her climb back aboard and start varnishing the companionway. A black-crowned heron darts along the dock, a wriggling fish in its beak. After a few silent minutes, the old-timer wanders away. Kelly has no intention of paying for a clean hull. She'll dive and scrape it herself late at night when the bay cools down. Her eyesight is acute underwater, needing only moonlight. She can stay under as long as the work takes, all night if necessary. Waiting for the varnish to dry, she flexes the sun-warmed soles of her feet. A hand slides off her knee to caress a curl of rope on the deck, the end of the mainsail halyard. The fibers alternate in contrasting shades, raven dark and lustrous pearl gray. Thanks, Improbable Press.